My name is Dr. Christy Del Castillo Hege of the Fed is Best Foundation, and this is an educational presentation for parents on the physiology of newborn jaundice and why Fed is best to reduce jaundice and the toxic effects of bilirubin to the newborn brain. In this presentation, I hope to answer the most common questions they receive about jaundice from parents. First, we will discuss how common abnormal jaundice or hyperbilirubinemia is. Then we will review the causes of hyperbilirubinemia in the newborn period. Next, we will review how bilirubin accumulates and how it is removed. And finally, we will discuss how hyperbilirubinemia affects the newborn brain, how and why it is treated, and its long-term consequences. The purpose of this presentation is to help parents understand how adequate feeding improves bilirubin levels and prevents brain injury. Newborn jaundice is common, affecting 60% of healthy term babies in the first weeks of life. Among premature babies, this incidence is even higher, affecting 80%. Hyperbilirubinemia is excessive jaundice, which can result in a range of subtle to severe developmental delays due to irreversible brain injury. The most common cause of hyperbilirubinemia in the world is low milk intake from exclusive breastfeeding when the breast milk supply of a mother is insufficient. In a study of newborns hospitalized for starvation-related jaundice, nearly 100% of the babies were exclusively breastfed. Neonatal jaundice is the leading cause of preventable newborn hospitalizations in the world, the majority in underfed or so-called dehydrated newborns. One study in China found that 49% of all newborn admissions were for jaundice. Since the publication of the World Health Organization Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative mandating exclusive breastfeeding from birth even before the onset of copious milk production, hospitalizations for neonatal jaundice and dehydration have risen steadily. Worldwide, approximately 1.1 million babies will develop severe jaundice every year, which makes up 8 to 24 percent of jaundice hospitalizations. This means that roughly 3 to 10 million babies are hospitalized annually for moderate hyperbilirubinemia to prevent or limit brain injury. In addition, it has been found that among healthy, motivated, exclusively breastfeeding mothers given excellent breastfeeding support, 22% will develop delayed copious milk production or lactogenesis 2, which can cause their child to become underfed and excessively jaundiced. This represents an additional 26 million babies that require supplementation just on the basis of maternal milk supply. Therefore, despite widespread claims that insufficient breast milk is rare, insufficient milk in the first days of life is quite common, and so are the complications it causes breastfed newborns. Complications from underfeeding due to exclusive breastfeeding are common, especially in hospitals that severely restrict formula supplementation. In fact, the most recent data on the rate of hospitalizations for phototherapy requiring jaundice in a baby-friendly hospital system was 10.1%, or over 10,000 babies in a three-year period, the majority caused by underfeeding-related jaundice. There are two types of hyperbilirubinemia. One category is caused by increased production of bilirubin from accelerated breakdown of fetal red blood cells, called hemolytic jaundice. This is the less common type, making up 12% of all cases. These are mostly caused by incompatible blood between the mom and baby and other genetic conditions that predispose a baby to hemolysis, like G6PD. The other category is the most common cause of hyperbilirubinemia, which is non-hemolytic jaundice, making up 86% of all hyperbilirubinemia. This type of jaundice is caused by insufficient intake of milk by a baby. Some cases result from ineffective latch or technique. However, the majority of cases are caused by insufficient milk production in the first days of life. Since 22% of mothers develop delayed lactogenesis 2, which can cause jaundice from underfeeding, roughly 1 in 5 baby can develop non-hemolytic jaundice if not supplemented. This is also called by the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine as starvation jaundice, which they report occurs to 10 to 18% of exclusively breastfed newborns. How does bilirubin accumulate in the blood? 
Billy Rubin is released from the breakdown of fetal red blood cells when a baby is born in order to transition to mature red blood cells. This partially contributes to increased levels of bilirubin, which causes yellowing of skin, called jaundice. The primary way bilirubin is removed from the body is through the liver into the intestines, carried away by milk. If little milk is present, as in the case of an underfed, exclusively breastfed newborn, liver excretion will become impaired, causing bilirubin to be reabsorbed into the blood. This causes accumulation of bilirubin leading to hyperbilirubinemia. It has been shown in multiple studies that exclusively breastfed newborns have higher levels of bilirubin than supplemented newborns, and those levels are increased the more the baby loses weight. In the presence of high blood bilirubin, a small percent of bilirubin can be removed through the kidneys, a process facilitated by phototherapy. But even in the presence of phototherapy, the majority of bilirubin is still carried away by milk in the intestines. If an underfed, exclusively breastfed newborn is given supplemental milk when the mother's milk is not enough, liver excretion of bilirubin can resume and the hyperbilirubinemia resolves. Therefore, the most effective treatment for hyperbilirubinemia is feeding adequate milk and supplementing when breast milk is not enough. Hyperbilirubinemia with levels above 15 have been shown in multiple studies to increase the risk of long-term cognitive impairments and developmental disabilities, including decreased completion of high school and college, lower academic achievement, ADHD, autism, cerebral palsy, and seizure disorders. Severe hyperbilirubinemia above 20 increases the risk of all the above-mentioned disabilities, as well as hearing and visual impairment and mental retardation. Both moderate and severe hyperbilirubinemia are known to result in bilirubin-induced neurological disorder, which is caused by bilirubin entering the brain, most commonly in the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is involved in movement, behavior, learning, memory, and emotion. The scientific literature has found that once a baby has a bilirubin level high enough to acquire phototherapy, they have already developed higher circulating markers of brain injury in their blood. This brain injury does not reverse with phototherapy or supplementation. The purpose of phototherapy and supplementation to reduce bilirubin is to limit further injury to the brain. Kernicterus is severe hyperbilirubinemia and results in damage to the basal ganglia seen here on MRI. A newborn with kernicterus develops lethargy, decreased feeding, high-pitched crying, spasms, fever, seizures, and even death. In the aftermath of acute kernicterus, a baby can develop mental retardation, movement disorder, hearing and visual impairment, gastrointestinal dysfunction, and speech impairment. In summary, Newborn hyperbilirubinemia is the leading cause of preventable newborn hospitalizations worldwide and is the most common complication of exclusive breastfeeding before copious milk production. The majority of hyperbilirubinemia is preventable with earlier supplementation. Once a child develops bilirubin-induced neurological dysfunction and brain injury, their risk for multiple developmental disabilities increase, which cannot be reversed with phototherapy or supplementation. Feeding a child adequately with breast milk and or formula before the development of complications is the most effective way to reduce the risk of newborn brain injury from hyperbilirubinemia. In other words, Supplementation when breast milk is not enough will save a child from a lifetime of disability. Fed is best.